Welcome everyone to this episode of the Mortgages Mortgage Matters Show with Gretchen, where I talk to real people in the field of real estate and business who are not only experts, but are generous and willing to share their knowledge and wisdom with us here today. And the goal of the show is for you to gain some knowledge and tips to help you and your goals in your business and your real estate growth, and to take some of the guesswork out of what to do or who to call when you need something. And today, I'm very grateful to have Nofal along with me. Nofal's journey began in banking, where he developed a keen insight into financial management and client relations. This experience naturally progressed into a focus on commercial lending, where Nofal spent several years working closely with businesses to navigate complex financial landscapes and secure the funding necessary for growth and success. His passion for real estate led him to become a licensed realtor, allowing him to become a financial excuse me, allowing him to combine his financial acumen with in-depth knowledge on the property market. And this unique blend of skills has enabled him to offer comprehensive advice and solutions to clients, whether they are looking to invest in, sell, or manage properties. Uh, in pursuing his entrepreneurial ambitions, Nopal founded Trusted Property Solutions, a property management company based in Ontario. His company is dedicated to delivering reliable and personalized property management services underpinned in the principles of trust and integrity. His multifaceted experience equips him to approach property management with a holistic appro approach, ensuring clients receive not just a service, but a partnership focused on long-term success. And I first met Nofo pretty recently. He actually reached out to me um, having seen my vehicle and my car is actually wrapped and he does mention on it that I'm investor focused. And I think he then checked me out online and found we had some definite mutual interest in who we like to serve and how we like to work. So we had some conversations and um, I'm just very grateful Nofo that you're here today because I always love educating people and you have some unique uh, perspectives. So please um, add anything you'd like to that introduction and anything else you think we should know about you. For sure. Well, thank you very much, Gretchen, for having me on the show today. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to going through and educating your uh, your client base and your viewers on uh, the property management side of things. I'm sure everybody's well-versed in the real estate market, especially being from Toronto. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm really glad that I spotted that uh, mortgages by Gretchen Carr because it, it's the start of a great relationship. So yeah, no, looking forward to it. Awesome. So where do you focus on, on and do you see differences in property management and and being a realtor, both aspects in, in different cities, for example, like, um, you know, I happen to be in Durham, but of course clients could be anywhere. But um, at this moment, is there any differences you're seeing like say Toronto or Scarborough versus Durham or different things like that? Yeah, for sure. So on the, well, to answer your first question, I focus pretty much all across Ontario. And the reason that I say that is because I can virtually manage some of the properties. So I have one that I'm virtually managing out in Kitchener, uh, another one in Brantford. So um, it depends on what service is needed for that specific property. Not every property could be managed uh, virtually, but the ones that I can, I, I handle those virtually. Um, but other than that, if it's an in-person uh, property manager that's needed, uh, it's basically, I'm also based out of Durham. So it's basically an hour and a half in any which direction uh, that I can physically be there. But the portfolio ranges anywhere from, I would say Brantford to Belleville or Peterborough. Um, in terms of, uh, like urban areas, so we're looking at our downtown Toronto or North York, uh, Mississauga city center, like a lot of the, the main hubs, you'll find that it's a lot faster paced. Um, there's a lot more, uh, tenant turnover. So majority of the people that are going, uh, and purchasing a condo downtown, aren't anticipating being there for the long term. They're mostly there to either get started um, in their real estate investing journey uh, and then eventually move into a bigger home um, or they're just using it as an investment. So you'll find that even the tenants that are going down there and uh, the property owners that were living there, they end up spreading out after a little bit of time. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things that I notice with um, 
downtown living or any of the central Toronto living is it's uh, I, I guess it was pretty heavily affected by COVID where everybody got sent home. So you had the vast majority of people spread out across the suburban areas. Um, and now with a lot of uh, a lot of the, the big companies trying to bring employees back, that's changed as well. So majority of people are starting to go back into the office or getting called back into the office. Uh, and because of that, you're finding a big shift from the suburbs back into the urban uh, areas. So I know that might be long winded, but it's it's different depending on whatever area. Uh, the the type of tenants that you'll get the and this is more on the property management side, the type of tenants that you'll get, the quality of tenants that you'll get will vary depending on uh, city, what companies are based out of there, uh, like for example, if you're getting tenants out in uh, South Oshawa versus getting somebody out in like Young and Eglinton, you'll find a very, very different pool of pool of tenants. So yeah, there there is uh, quite a bit of uh, of discrepancy between where you end up finding your property. Okay, which is important to consider when deciding on what's pro so it would probably be good for people to involve you in their decision making too if they haven't yet bought a property exactly exactly yeah, yeah. There, there is a lot that goes into it and if you think about it you're putting a lot of money into this investment um you want to make sure you're weighing the pros and cons of, of both areas that you end up looking at you don't want to just focus on price because when you're focused just and i'm sure you know this you've been in the mortgage game for a long time if you're just focused on price there's a lot of other factors that go into a real estate investment okay that makes sense. And do you find as, as the property manager, is your time, you know, is a lot of your time go into finding tenants and then screening tenants or um, like kind of what's the breakdown of how much time you spend on different tasks for a certain property, a given property? Yeah, for sure. So the way that I have it structured is the property management is not, I wouldn't say separate, but it is uh, a service aside from the tenant placement. So the tenant placement, because I'm a realtor, I'm able to do the tenant placement through my license, uh, which runs through my brokerage, which is right at home. Um, and then all the property management runs through Trusted Property Solutions. So I've had clients that call me and they already have their tenants and they prefer um, picking their tenants themselves. Um, I have, I actually just got off the phone with a client today that uh, is doing room rentals. Um, so it's a four bedroom house. He's renting out each individual room in a situation like that, they prefer picking their tenants. They just really need somebody to manage it going forward. So I would say the majority of my time goes to the actual management, not necessarily to the tenant placement. Um, and that, maybe that's just the way that my business is structured. Um, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of other property managers, their focus is on the tenant placement and not so much on the uh, actual management. That to them is more of a recurring uh, stream of income. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And what got you interested in being a property manager? For sure. Yeah. So my, again, I, I think you mentioned a, a, a snippet of my journey. So I've been in commercial banking for a long time uh, on the lending side. So lending to corporations, uh, but I actually started my career um, also with the big five banks, but that uh, focus was on individual investors. So it was managing a portfolio of uh, high net worth individuals. And for them, it was all their mortgages and all their investments. So it was kind of a, a, a twofold role, but uh, that's kind of where I got into banking. And then I shifted into the commercial lending, then got my real estate license. Um, and I always loved dealing directly with uh, clients. Like dealing with a corporation or dealing with a business is great. Um, and that's also their baby, but dealing with somebody's like hard assets, which is their house or their real estate portfolio, that to me was where the passion uh, was leading to. And once I got into real estate, I ended up working with a lot of investor clients. Um, those investors, they... I would be with them for the buy or for the sell of their property. I would do the tenant placement and then I would kind of have to, to walk away because I wasn't doing property management. So I'd be like, here, you could talk to this person or that person for the property management. 
Um, a couple of them had bad experiences with the property manager that they were, they were dealing with for various reasons, um, either lack of communication or whatever it was. Um, and I would kind of get roped back in uh, after closing the deal. And not a lot of realtors do come back. They kind of say like, oh, just deal with the property manager or deal with the landlord tenant board. Um, but I, I, for me, I couldn't leave my clients hanging. Uh, and I guess I indirectly became their property manager. And one of them suggested, Hey, like you're already managing our properties. Why don't you <laughs> this, why don't you just make this a business and, and like, we'll pay you for your time, which was amazing for, of them to, to suggest. And that's the birth of trusted property solutions. So the passion turned into, and, and one thing I realized is, is no one will take care of my clients the way that I will. Uh, and it's a, it's a tough expectation of us to want somebody to do that. And I know it's kind of cliche, but they say, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Uh, that's really what got me into property management. Well, I think what's awesome is obviously they, they trusted you. They liked your approach. They liked working with you and, um, you know, you came upon it. And like you said, you're doing the job anyway, so why not, why not make it a business? So uh, I think that's awesome. That's a great way to have that develop. Um, For sure, yeah. 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 And uh, I, I think one of the biggest things with property management is, and just being a landlord in Ontario, nothing is perfect. Uh, no transaction is going to be perfect. No tenant is going to be perfect. Um, but the biggest thing is communication. As long as you have open communication from both ends, uh, between property manager and landlord, between landlord and tenant, between uh, tenant and property manager. That's what makes it, even if it's the worst situation ever, that's what makes it somewhat bearable. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, how would you say your approach is unique or special as a property manager? Yeah. So I, I feel like I answered it a little bit in my other uh, things just because I always jumped the gun on it. But um, I, I like to make sure that there's a lot of handholding with my landlords, uh, a lot of expectation setting right from the get go. Uh, and that also goes with my tenants. So anyone that I'm getting into a property, um, I, I like to make sure that there's there's a 100% of a hands on approach. Um, they never feel like there's a lack of communication. And that goes on both sides, because even though in most situations, you're representing the landlord, you still want to be respectful and communicative with the tenant because that's again how you create a long-lasting relationship you don't want it to be transactional uh, i found that anytime in business you're transactional nothing ever goes uh the way that you want it to and that's not how you grow yeah i love that that's so smart and i i would think too as a myself it would be great to have that person like yourself to do the who's a little, who's not emotionally involved, but has ability to have a close relationship. So a close, a proper working relationship with that person. And I think that's awesome. So, um, because it is hard to be, um, impartial, um, impartial, I guess is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really good. Uh, have you ever, um, so you mentioned somebody has some borders, which has, have you done like student housing before as property manager? Yeah, so there's one in Kitchener that I'm working on right now, uh, or working with them right now. That's uh, three students living there. So yes, that's one. I actually, the same call that I got off earlier today, that's another uh, stu rooming or student housing. It's not necessarily students, but it is um, individual room rentals. So they're treating it like a, I guess, a boarding house or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, lenders don't really like the term boarding house, but- exactly. You know, having people lenders, there are alternative lenders will now use some um, like a per room uh, contributory income or border income to a full amount, which is, you know, for, for qualifying. So, okay, for sure. Maybe that's a conversation we, we have after this because I might have some more questions on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to talk about it further. Um, what would your advice be to first time landlords, um, either about selecting tenants or anything else you feel is really important that people don't always realize? For sure. Yeah. So one thing I would say for first time landlords is don't think it's going to be a passive investment. Um, I think a lot of times 
Anyone that's investing in real estate thinks it's going to be a passive investment based off of what they've seen historically. Um, like if you were if you were purchasing something four years ago, uh, you would have made three or four hundred thousand dollars depending on how much you put in, and that's where you cash out. You might have had to deal with a tenant for a year uh, or two as it appreciates, and that was your goal. But right now, a lot of properties are not cash flow positive. Uh, that's one thing. Um, just with the interest rate environment that we're in. The second part of that is tenants uh, and the frank part of it is tenants do have more rights than landlords here in Ontario. Um, a lot the system is built uh, around tenants. So being a landlord here versus being a landlord in the US is not the same thing. Um, I know a lot of people and I've actually had clients like this too, where they'll listen to a motivational podcast, but it's US based. Um, and they get into real estate investing and all of a sudden they realize it's not at all uh, peaches and roses uh, and, or it's not a walk in the park. There is a lot that goes into it. Um, part of the reason to, to answer the previous question that you'd asked why I got into property management is to take away a lot of the stress that comes along with, um, with being a landlord. Uh, you want to be able to have it as passive as possible, but it'll never be a hundred percent passive. That makes sense. Yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying. And I've seen that before with people that come to different investing groups that I attend and stuff. And they realize, wow, this is, this is a business, not just like uh, some side money. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, why do you prefer to focus on working with investors um, as a realtor versus other market segments? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say I have a, a direct preference of working with investors. I'm pretty open. Like I've done a lot of first time home buyer stuff. Um, and then the investors is kind of something that I stumbled upon. And the, the reason that it ended up being that way is in Ontario, the majority of our economy is supported by housing. So realistically, anyone that's ever going to be looking to invest, once they get their first property or their second property or whatever it is, they've kind of turned into an investor. So once I did, let's say the first time home buyer uh, for one client, then they bring in their family and now they're a group of investors or it grows into a, a multifamily um, uh, project or they have like multiple properties in different places that they need managed. Uh, and then I also have my actual real estate investors who are under a corporation and, and own uh, X amount of units. So I think it ended up being something that I kind of fell into. And my background in commercial lending really, uh, I guess, supported and helped me focus on that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I it's interesting you say that because I've always looked at it like everybody, if you're buying a house, you're an investor, whether exactly. even if you don't have a, a tenant, you're it's an investment. So, and, and I agree with what you're saying too. People start going, well, you know, maybe I should have another property. So uh, yeah. yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, as a realtor, what are you seeing in the market right now that would be, uh, I know high rates, that's definitely something. <laughs> yeah. What else would you say or some of the takeaways of what you're running into? Well, I think, and I'm sure you could speak more to the mortgage side of things, um, where a lot of people are going to have their their mortgages coming up for renewal in the next couple of years. So I think 2025 and 2026 are going to be the, anyone that had a five-year locked in in 2020 or 2021, there's going to be a large chunk of them coming up. So if these rates don't continue to drop, there's going to be a lot of people in trouble. And if there's a lot of people in trouble, you're going to flood the market with uh, a ton of inventory. Well, that's again, the Toronto market's unpredictable, but that's kind of where things are going to go that you'll flood the market with a ton of inventory prices will either plateau or drop. Um, but on the flip side, as interest rates cool down and buyers become more active, you'll have more of an opportunity to, I guess, balance out that market right now. What I'm seeing is there's been a lot of people sitting on the sidelines um, both on the seller side and on the buyer side, buyers are getting into the market if they need to. So by that, what I mean is it's just a natural next step in their life that they need to go and purchase a property. They don't want to rent. 
Um, they might hop on a variable rate just so they can, I guess, ride out the, the high interest rates before they lock in. But for them getting into the market right now, it's because it's the natural next step. Sellers, unless they're in financial distress or um, going through uh, family problems or something like that, they are also not actively putting their their uh, properties on the market. They are uh, like I've seen a bunch where they've they've been testing out the market. Some of my clients as well, where we'll put it up and just see what we get, but they're not that serious about offloading it unless they get the right number. So I think everybody right now is, it's a weird place where everyone's sitting on the sidelines and, and hoping to get back into the market. Yeah. And are you running into many people who are, maybe they've already come up for renewal and they're, or they're just having a cash flow crunch in their, you know, going to rent out their basement, for example, or add a, sep add a separate unit in the basement or an ADU, a additional dwelling in the back property or things like that. Yeah, so I've seen a couple where they wanted to finish up their basements. Uh, so they're getting quotes on getting their basements done, um, weighing out the the cost benefit of having that income coming in uh, versus having to offload the property completely. So there have been a couple. I don't think it's gotten to that point of craziness yet where we're seeing a ton hit the market, but I, I don't see it being too far off from that. Yeah. And what are you saying with like the entry level homes and condos, specifically condos as well? So from what I've seen, the condo market is very, very oversaturated in terms of the number of listings. Um, there's way too many options right now. And again, I'm, I'm sure you know this as well. Like if a buyer's chances are if, if a first time home buyer or somebody that's looking to get into the market is looking for a property, their first choice always is going to be a double car detached um, home. And whether that ends up being out in the suburbs or in like Summer Hill, um, th that's kind of their preference. Then they'll move down to a uh, semi-detached, then a townhouse, then a condo townhouse, then a condo. So condos are usually, and entry-level homes are usually at the bottom of the list. So when things hit reverse gear and not as many buyers are active out there, those are the first listings that come up. Majority of condos and majority of um, entry-level homes, a lot of people bought them just as investments because they they thought that that was going to be, or we they thought we were going to see what we saw over the past couple of years where you buy something and you you make a quick flip and all of a sudden you're happy. Uh, there have been a lot of changes that came in with the foreign investor uh, taxes, um, the vacancy taxes. So that's also uh, uh, put a lot of pressure on people selling their condos, especially in areas like downtown Toronto, um, where there's such a such a massive number of them. Now, on the flip side, with people being pushed back into the office, I don't know if that is going to change uh, and go into reverse gear again. Um, but as of right now, it's just very, very flooded with inventory. And a lot of people are trying to get a price that chances are they probably won't get in this market. Yeah. And I mean, one thing that you're probably seeing that I'm seeing is it's a really good idea to sell first if you are selling. <laughs> Not buy first. Yes, a hundred percent. I've so, got a couple of people stuck right now, and they're they either let it go at a really low price or pay for private lending at a really high price, or you know they don't have a lot of good options. Yeah, yeah, and like I was actually just reading a, a forum post right now. It's funny that you brought that up, um, where somebody's just like, "Hey, like I need to purchase another house, but I don't know if I should sell mine first. Should I just go buy another one? What should I do?" Um, and all the responses are like, you can either work it into your contract that like your, your purchase is contingent upon you selling your place, which in this market, you might be able to get away with, or they're like, do not buy until you're sold. So exactly what you're saying. I think it's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy to, to see what's going on right now. Yeah, it's tough. The good thing is that we usually can find some sort of a financial solution. It's just not going to be the cheapest solution that you were wanting. Exactly. exactly. So, um, and what upcoming changes are you expecting? I guess we kind of went over a bit, but with prices, I mean, all how this is all affecting prices for people who aren't as maybe savvy of understanding that. 
I, again, I don't think anyone has a, a crystal ball, so it's tough to predict. Uh, and I'm, I'm the last person that would love to sit here and predict, but I think prices either will plateau or start going up depending on how much they drop interest rates and whether people that own their homes can survive their rate renewal. So I think it's a combination of those two things. And if we can hit a fine line with that, prices will probably climb back up. Interest rates are always going to be the, the biggest uh, influence of that. And I think we saw that even with the, the rapid rate hikes that they did, where people were getting like, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong, like 1.5%, like 1.2% I've seen um, from going from that to now going to like 6%. So when we saw that happen, we did see, let's say on a $1.6 million house dropping down to 1.2 or 1.1. Now on the flip side, if, if that goes in reverse, I don't know what extent uh, they'll drop them to, but let's just say we average out at maybe 3% or something. Um, I do see them climbing back up, but that depends on how many people are coming up for renewal and how many homes are going to hit the market. Uh, because it's, it's a combination of two things, supply and demand and interest rates. So yeah. there's a fine line somewhere in there to have a balanced market. I don't know exactly what that is, but that's kind of where we're trending towards. Makes sense. Um, and what's your one last piece of advice for Canadians right now? So I'd say keep an eye, and I know every every person watching this, if they are watching this, has some sort of uh, connection with the real estate market. They've either talked to somebody or it's just a general piece of conversation that comes up now. So I'd say stay informed on market trends and interest rates. You want to know where interest rates are trending. Uh, you want to know um, how that's going to affect your buying power. Um, honestly, my advice would be talk to talk to Gretchen. Uh, if you have any questions about interest rates, have any questions about what you can actually afford. Uh, and that kind of leads into a, a second part of that answer, which is buy within your budget. Uh, I know a lot of people get uh, FOMO or they they want to they want to jump into the market just for the sake of jumping in. But it's not always recommended to do things that way. Um, be calculated. No, buy within your means um, and you like for anything you want to have the right partners around you so that you're you're removing a lot of the stress that goes along with owning property. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize uh, the extent of owning real estate uh, and those that do can probably echo exactly what I'm saying. You want to buy within your budget and you want to have the right partners around you. Well, I think that's really great advice. And um, I'm so grateful for you being here. I look forward to sharing info about you um, and this interview. How can people reach you? For sure. You could give me a call at 437-929-1312. Uh, uh, you could search Trusted Property Solutions uh, just to Google search away. Um, and yeah, my email address will be on there as well. Uh, and feel free to reach out that way. Okay, and I'll make sure there's info uh, provided on the social media platforms and YouTube with the- uh, I appreciate it. So thank you so much. It was great talking to you today. It was a pleasure talking to you as well, Gretchen. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Dofel. Take care. Take care. Bye.